Tudo bem? Eu estou muito bem, <risos> meu querido. Muito feliz. Oh, Jesus. Ei, I need to know bonito. Portuguese. O, 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 é um dia bonito aqui na Flórida. Yeah, that's what I always say. It's a, a beautiful day in Florida. Yeah. It's a nice day to be here. Amen. The outside, they have this nice talk. Nice yeah. chat with you. Look at the environment. I mean, my Lord. Oh, yeah. Our studio is great. Look. Our new studio. Yes. What's up, guys? I'm Kyle, and uh, I'm here with my beloved Pastor Erle, a man of I God. Love this guy. Yeah, a man of God and uh, a blessing to my life. Today, we're going to ask him a few questions. Um, and before we get into that, Pastor, go ahead and share with the people a little bit about yourself. What was life like before Jesus, how you met him, what it's like now? Yeah, I grew up at the church. And, but I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I was playing in the band at the church, uh, going every weekend, sometimes during the week as well. But I really had my experience with Jesus when I was 18. Uh, was an important uh, season that I have to decide what I'm going to do in the future. And I was living a crazy life. I was living a life in emptiness and anxiety. This was my main problem, emptiness. I feel empty and alone, which a lot of questions, existential questions in my mind that I didn't have answers. And in this season, God sent a missionary, Levit and Ori Carvalho, and he spent time with me, answering my questions, and at the same time, helping me to get to know Jesus. And I understood who, who was Jesus. Now, the gospel that I was heard inside of the church became life in me, truth in me. And I was in my room in the second week of September 8, 1983. And I decided to repent from the life that I live in my own plan and purpose. And I decided that week, Jesus, from today, I'm going to depend on you. And I entered a commitment, I'm, I'm spiritual marriage, a covenant with Jesus. From that moment, my life changed. Entering a, a, a sense, a purpose, reason to live. The love of the Father really caught me. Mm. This changed my life completely. Amen. And so, before they click off, hopefully you haven't. Yeah. Um, Be there with us. Be yeah, there, nice the whole way. Here. Help us out, please, with our YouTube statistics. <laughs> yes. Subscribe, yeah. like, oh, and yeah. share. Call of action, Any please. Any comments, please. <laughs> It's important you comment. You can ask some questions that you'd like to get answers from me. Now he's a YouTube professional, so if you yeah, need any sorry. advice. <laughs> Pastor, um, what is the gospel? Uh, the gospel is mm. the same. Mm. It's the same from uh, 2,000 years ago. It's about God sending his son to die in the cross uh, for pay everything that we thought, we felt, and we, we did uh, against his plan and the purpose. And when Jesus died in that cross, the word death in the Bible is separation. He, he, he experienced the separation from God's father. Because we are experienced. Because every sin, every disobedience bring death. Romans 6, 23. Separation from God. When it is the experience of this death there, paying our debt, our debt was paid. And when he rose from the death, uh, now we'd be able, we got to reconnect with God. If death is separation in the Bible, life is reconnection. And when you got alliance and commitment with Jesus, with this new, true new that the Bible share, we, we enter this new reality. We receive a new nature, a new heart, a new mind. And we enter in the kingdom of God and experience a new reality. This is gospel. And we know that you are only experiencing now what you're going to experience Uh, in full, mm. when Jesus come, 
He who will come. This is gospel. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah, and pay attention. Because <laughs> not too many people is preaching this gospel. Right. You understand? Sometimes the people put a lot of sugar in your gospel, like our water. Put a lot of sugar to be sweet for you. Dress then, not sin, don't talk about sin, repent, this commitment, a lies. No, sometimes they are selling Mac, uh, a Mac gospel. Ooh, nice. Yeah. In Mac church. Nutella gospel, that's your favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Pastor, you've, you've lived um, through some generations in your lifetime. You've saw... Um, Many changes in in the culture. Look like I'm in <laughs> many generations. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Sorry. Uh. What what do you see that's different in this generation? In uh, I don't know, twenty five and under. We paid for that. Ducks do this. Yeah, yeah. We paid. What? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna edit it a little bit later. Make it look a little bit more heavenly. <laughs> and. Um, what do you see in today's generation that's changed? Some things that maybe worry you, but also some things that you're excited about that are positive. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, my father was from the baby boomers, okay? The generation that came after the Second War. Uh, we, we, I came from Brazil. We didn't experience uh the way that united states and europe experienced the second war in asia as well uh we a lot of brazilians went to the war of course um so everything that came after okay for my generation that's generation x we had to to enter in the several, the several transitions Generation X is about learning things always, new things. Mm. Understand? Because uh, we, I didn't have a TV. My generation didn't have TV. <laughs> and suddenly, TV starts. We have only radios. And, and you have to learn later on how to use the control mm. and how to use the computer. I was 18 the first time that I used a computer in a bank. Understand? Wow. And, and you see that cursor, that, that what you do, how to do. So, uh, 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 cassette tape or to iPod to we had to always be changing and learning and, and, and at the same time the culture was changing and the postmodern culture was taking over the reality of the modern culture that was at especially after second second war in Europe and the, in the United States so the reference uh, God as a reference Jesus and the Bible as a reference Inclusive for non-believers, for them was logical. They think in this in this sense that if if this is right, so if A is right, B is wrong. Was normal. If God says this or the moral is this, what is against this is not moral. So I'm not going to live. It was in logic for many of them, but they decide to live the, the way that a lot of Christians and the Jews was living. With General X experienced this. Understand? Mm. We little by little start to see our generation bring the changes, and the millennials came, and, and, and the millennials the, the challenge was new how to use everything that the technology was producing, but at the same time, how they have to live with this new mentality that came. Uh, 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 now the postmodern uh, uh, reality took God and Jesus and the Bible and Christianity as a reference. And, 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 and in this moment, the millennials, they, 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 they face this, this reality that everything is being disconstructed. Marriage get another sense. Life get another thing, sense. Baby get another, another sense. Gender, gender get another sense. Women, women, and the new feminism get another. So this is a lot of things that's the challenge for, for millennials. And the Generation Z is grabbing this. Mm -hmm. And the Generation Z, your generation, they are wah, 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 wah and they are lost. Mm -hmm. They are lost. They, they don't know, they are received. They are inside of this, this technological revolution. 
and using these, but philosophically, spiritually, they are lost because they don't have any reference. They don't know who they are. They lost their identity. And it's difficult. They understand if they are men and women, understand, because they can be several things that the culture is offering. What was referenced for Z generation and balance for millennials about family is completely destroyed for them. Family is what you feel, understand, and, and, and it's not about commitment, but it's about what, what you feel. And a lot of families being destroyed. They are result the destruction that the millennials receiving. So there is a lot of challenge for Z generation, for millennial generations. And, and what is the positive that with this uh, connection that came, understand, uh, we can use this te technology for to do good uh, 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 in health, to do good. If you know how to balance, you can build new relationship, not to only your own neighborhood, your your friends, close friends, but around the world, you can build a new new connection, new relationships, and you can be you can be more not in favor of a globalization, but be more global mm. in several sense. The cultures get more together. We can receive so many positive things from other cultures. Yeah. This would be the positive thing that I, I could mention. Yeah. One thing I've learned from you is is so how important it is to understand the mentality of the specific generation now, because exactly. you can't properly, you know, share a message, share the gospel with them, um, and kind of to piggyback on that, the growth of technology, we are seeing outrageous uh, statistics as far as pornography goes. Yes. Um, Kids younger and younger are being exposed to it. They're becoming actually addicted to it. Yes. Younger and younger. Um, speak a little bit on on just how much this stuff affects the brain and life of a person. Yeah. For for to to try to help people to understand, I need to to come to the big picture to the part, particularity to small situation. Why pornography is, is today a, a, a pop culture more and more. More and more the TV and the shows is selling this that is normal. You can do this, you can use it in your know, marriage and, and whatever. And why? We can't take this out from this uh, cultural uh, war that we are living today between the left culture that has the base in postmodern mentality. So no God, no Christianity, no absolute reference in Bible. Okay? So this is the base of, of, of um, postmodernity and the left-wing culture that came in, with this uh, this philosophical way of things. So when this came, this came with a, 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 a main goal, destroy everything that what the, the culture, Judaic Christian believe, the Bible teach, the God teach. So what is the core in the Bible? Family. Family. God is the God of family. Mm. And the family Jesus established in Matthew 19. Man, and women. And the man have to leave his family and be united with his wife. Be one couple. Understand? And this is when Jesus starts to say this. He says, he says God created a female and male. Jesus established gender in the Bible. So the postmodern culture, the new, new left culture, they have a goal, destroy this concept. No longer this concept, Judaic Christian is established as a base, philosophical base or cultural base for the family. So they have several weapons to destroy this. Philosophical weapon, trying to take God and this out of the picture, understand? And cultural offers, proposal to destroy 
this man and woman as a, a, a core. Because when you destroy family, you control a society. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, pornography is one of that weapon to destroy family. Why? If you get to use with pornography, what is about pornography? Pornography, it's, it's about uh, uh, diversity. Men have this, already have this instinct to, to feel attractive for several women. Uh, 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 so if you feed guys with pornography, you, his brain is trained. We know every new experience builds new synapses inside of us. More you have that experience, good or bad, understand? More strong that synapses become in your mind. Mm. This come addiction, mm -hmm. addiction for sex, job, addiction, emotional addiction, addiction for heroin, cocaine, whatever, is because strong synapses uh, was building there. The Bible calls this one abysm, call another abysm. Understand what the, the the neuroscientists say today is the strong snap being feed building and feeding there. So what happens? More the, the, the guys and the girls get used with this, more they get used with the variety. Mm -hmm. They need more experience and a different experience. Not only one woman will satisfy. They need more than one. Not one guy will satisfy. She needs more than one guy. And it's Im impossible will you be in a monogamic family when she, he learned to feel attracted and to feel pres uh, pressure with more than one girl. It's impossible she be faithful and he be faithful when they, they belt the synapses, new synapses in their minds, just then, to feel attracted and pressure with the more one man. Because they assign a paper and they put a ring, mean they want to be faithful now? If everything was built in their mind to pornography for them to have desired wish. So this is one way. Pornography feeds this little monster inside. And it's, it, 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 it feeds this and automatically men and women live to get this experience out. Today it's more than 50 million couple doing swing in the United States. Mm -hmm. People that no one imagines they are going to swing. Uh, 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 uh. So that family that had to be a core, uh, 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 a man have a pact with his wife for them to be together for the rest of the life is break because emotionally, feel, emotionally emo uh, 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 and their feelings and their impulse it's for having more people than one wife or one husband. Mm -hmm. This is the curse of pornography. Yeah. Feed this monster, you understand? And so many youth people. And, uh, and another thing, sooner they start, better for the left wing. Sooner the kids and the girls start having sexual experience better. If the first door is pornography, let's Feed them with pornography because who uh, I, I remember my, my daughter uh, share experience of one of her friends in Portugal. Uh, her and he, uh, her cousin, he put pornography for them watch when they are eight nine years old. Uh, let's watch, let's watch, and it's, let's watch. Why you can do? Let's do. And she started to have sex with nine years old. Because she, they start to watch pornography. Another situation, one of my disciples in Portugal, uh, uh, her brother was, uh, 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 she caught her brother watch, watching pornography once. And, and he knew the time that she came from, from the streets, uh, uh, through their house. In that time, uh, 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 he started to put pornography. And she caught again. And she got, got here watch again. And suddenly, she was sitting down with her brother to watch pornography. And suddenly, she started to see her brother going to her room to masturbate, watching her uh, um, naked in her room. 
just then. And an incestuous relationship starts there that grow in their life, do you understand? And it almost destroy her family. And she couldn't have any more the same relationship with her brother because it starts with pornography. Yeah. So this is out there. Yeah. So sad. So let's talk about this one guy, Jesus. Yeah. He's a good guy, I love guy, this right? guy. I love this guy. <laughs> he's a, he's a nice. good guy. <laughs> Um, what, what was he like while he walked this earth? If you could just kind of give him a, a quick synopsis. A I know, synopsis. I know some of this question came from yeah. Yandri and it came from Ruth. We got some questions from our beloved brothers and sisters out there in the, in the stratosphere. Yeah. And we're gonna, we're gonna, they, they got some really good ones. My goodness. Yandri, you kill me with your questions, bro. <laughs> this guy. Could you explain to us what Jesus was like when he when he was here on this earth? What was this dude yeah, like? Yeah, guys, because uh, 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 the, normally people don't don't use hermeneutics to read the gospels. So normally the, the Jesus that appears is normally the Jesus from Catholic Church or conservative church. And, and but when you contextualize Jesus. And put this in a good hermeneut inside of his culture. He's a completely, completely different person that we could see. If it is, if you bring Jesus from there to today, here today, uh, uh, Jesus will be a guy, simple guy in American culture. Understand? Sometimes walk with with short flip flop, t shirt uh, 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 you're gonna see Jesus laughing a lot, having fun a lot, just end. Uh, uh, but where people were, he'll be there, preaching the gospel, saying, oh, "Today, today, get a new season. Today, I'm here because the, the the presence of the authority of my Father of His King is coming here to this reality." Jesus uh, would be in downtown Tampa, among that bars, mm. or that uh, 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 with that people talking, sharing Jesus with them. Jesus would be uh, 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 living there and going to the hospitals to pray for people. Understand? To 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 heal heal people inside the hospitals. Jesus would be that guy, but with joy. With joy. Have Jesus is that guy that is really nice to be around. Understand? To be around, to talk, to have fun with him. But when he stopped to, to share what he had to share, yeah, you have to stop to listen. Because sometimes he got mad. Sometimes Jesus got mad. Sometimes Jesus uh, see that people that had commitment with him should have give value to this, it wasn't. And he, yeah, he made a, 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 a whip. A whip. Yeah, yeah. Just then, and he put people out from the temple because that people should be serious what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But they have interest to make money. Mm -hmm. Jesus would be, be persecuted today for the most evangelical pastors. And most, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, Christians, evangelical Christian wow. church Wow, that's today. crazy how you make that connection. Because yeah. he, he was all about, you know, bringing that truth to the Pharisees. Yeah. And now we have another kind of Pharisee. Exactly. The Pharisees wow. is still among us. A lot of pastors, a lot of leaders, a lot of Christians that look like, behold, they are still living the law. Mm. They think that because they have a good moral life, they give their tithes and the offerings. Wow. They pray, they go to the church. This is be a Christian. Wow. Just then. They never want a, pe a, pe a, pe a person for Jesus. They never share the gospel with someone and say, this is my spiritual son. They never make disciples. Never. They never spend the time with someone to make these people grow and these people reproduce another disciples. Why in the United States you don't see discipleship? 
Why am I say to see people preaching gospel, ask you to go to the church, not making disciples, spend the time the way that Jesus did and the thoughts in the, in the gospels? Why? Because today, uh, 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 Jesus, uh, 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 they see Jesus another way. And Jesus will be here today, confronting them. Mm. Understand? Confronting them. Some of them, you're going to open their synagogue, their beautiful temple mm -hmm. for Jesus. And Jesus, if you want to preach, think that you're going to be mad. Mm. Today, a lot of uh, pastors and leaders, evangelical Christian leaders, will be getting together to see how to put him in the prison. Wow. And how, no, better, how can you put them in an electric chair or, 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 or on the dead hole for him to be killed? Because the same spirit exists today. The same spirit is here today with a lot of Mac church, a lot of Mac gospel being preached. Dressed and, 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 and it's the, 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 the the criteria is simple. The, the way for you to uh, uh, analyze is simple. How many churches commit to do make disciples of all nations? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them they commit to have fellowship Sunday after after service, understand, and be there, worship, and for them, yeah, this is enough. Jesus will be here condemning this and he show how to make disciples of all nations. Amen. But he'll be a nice guy. Yeah. If you obey him, <laughs> if you want to follow him, you want to be with him, he'll be a nice guy to be together. Amen. I, I, I could imagine feel the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit when you be with Jesus. Wait sometime when you go to the secret place or when you worship it, we Feel this. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine be with Jesus? Wow. One day. So this is a question from Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Hi. It's a great question. She asks. Okay, okay, Ruth. Let me see if yeah, I, right. I'm able to answer this. Why is it so hard to talk about God's wrath or his punishment? We see it again and again in the Bible. But one, why is it so hard to talk about it? And two, why don't we see more people talking about that, even though it's there, clear in the Bible? There is, there is two extremes. Okay? One that come, the conservative Christian church, Catholic church, uh, evangelical conservative church that use this wrath as a God that's mad with you because you are in sin and because you are in sin God is ready he had here uh, 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 rod in his hand wait a moment to just uh, to crash you understand and a lot of Christians want to give this, this perspective about God a God that you don't find in the Bible a God that is not God, is not the God that we see in Jesus Christ. It's another is not that God that make Jesus suffer His wrath uh, in our favor and His offer grace for who get alliance, spiritual merit, commitment to be with Him and obey Him. Okay, in evangelism, in discipleship, not be a Christian to go to the church. So has this sign. It has another side. What is the another side? The another side, it's it's uh, 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 the wrath that these another people see that these people that is talking about, and they don't want to talk about anymore. They want to uh, 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 um, they want to sugar the gospel. Do you understand? And. Because they see that these people here is being radical. So they go to another stream and they make a sugar gospel. A, 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 a tasted gospel. Easy uh, 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 to digest. Mm -hmm. Understand? Uh, we need to balance this. Okay? We need to balance. When the Bible talks about the wrath of God, yeah, 
God, God, God look for our sin. Understand? He's make this make him sad. He not be he's not offended that oh like like a balanced person that you offended me. You disrespect me. Now you're gonna get this. The consequence. No. Our sins do nothing with God. Our offense do nothing with God. The only thing that have some power, not, not some some bring some sensitivity to God, is because He loves us. So His wrath, I would say, are angry, the same angry that I have when my son disobey me. Understand? Uh, 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 now I have a, a, a baby, right? Ray Ray. Ray Ray. And Ray Ray is, uh, is, is um, 16 months. And, and he disobeys a lot. And sometimes he disobeys so much that you stay tired. Do you understand? Tired. And uh, sometimes I need to put him time out. Do you understand? Because I love him. I love him. My love, just then. Uh, of course, when my, my kids, they are seven, eight, nine years old, uh, I have three kids uh, as well, and six granddaughters. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 sometimes you get mad. I, I would call this mad, upset. Not because you are disrespecting me, you're offending me, understand, you're harming me. No, because I love you. I don't want to see you go to this way. Do you understand? I know this is going to bring a consequence to you. I may try to help you. I may try to put a fence around you until you grow and you understand this. Do you understand? So a lot of wrath of God today is used the wrong way. Do you understand? And, and another people is, is avoid to talk because of these people. But they 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 sugar they sugar the, the gospel mm -hmm. when you have to balance. Yeah, God get upset, God get angry, not because you are offending him or harming his dignity or his value in himself. No, because he loves you. He doesn't want you go to your own way, to your own purpose. If you go. You're gonna get consequence when you doubt. Understand that God is doing for love. God is getting mad with you and upset with you for love. Look to the cross, because there His Son absorbed this in our faith. Submit to His Son, and never, never you're gonna get consequence to be disobeyed. Him. The consequence is hell. Hell is real. Here, here. Because the devil can oppress you and you keep, keep being suffering his empire. And when you die, you're going to be with the hell. Because God is a God that loved, that God that uh, 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 offered his son in the cross for you. But if you disobey, as a personal being, if you choose not to get commitment, you're going to get the consequence. He's not going to force you to be with him. You're going to get the consequence. Yeah, my brother. Stuff. Real stuff. Okay, Yandri. We saved the best for last. All right. This is a, this is a nice theological, strange question here. <laughs> but that's Yandri. All right. So, Jonah in the Old Testament was swallowed by a whale. Okay. Did you know this, Pastor? It's in the Bible, but <laughs> the Bible don't say well. Oh, large fish. Yeah, okay, a large okay, fish. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, well, this Jonah guy was in this large fish stomach for three days and three nights. But it takes 15 to 18 hours for them to digest food. <laughs> yeah. So how did Jonah get digested? There you go. Have fun. Look. If the Bible says that Jonah swallowed well, I would believe. <laughs> it, 
Why? Look, because the, uh, normally this question, I answered this question before. Normally, uh, I, know, I know that it's not Yandri uh, uh, environment or contest. Normally, uh, the presupposition is God is not a God of the supernatural power. Mm, I was hoping you were going to go there with this. God is not a God that can intervene and bring signs, wonders, and miracles. Mm. Understand? And God is real. God exists. God intervenes, manifests today still in signs, wonders, and miracles. How God are you going to make Jonathan swallow a well? I don't know. But if I was there, I knew God is capable to do the impossible. Do you understand? The same God that created this beautiful nature, do you understand? This powerful son is the same God that is able to touch in the, the stomach of that uh, uh, well. And she feels that thing there. He's gastric uh, 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 a chemical there didn't talk to Jonah. I don't know if he rose Jesus from the dead. Mm. What is making make Jonathan survive inside of that well? And it's amazing because it's related. Uh, when they ask, uh, the, the Jew ask it to Jesus a sign, he says the only sign that you're going to have is the sign of resurrection. Mm. I'll be three days I will be three days there. And the Bible says when he rose from the dead, they understood what it is. This is the sign of Jonathan. Wow. The same power that was over Jesus in that, in that sepulchre was the same power that was over Jonathan. Jonathan not to face death, Jesus to conquer death. Because God is a God still today performing miracles. And, and Paul says, this is in, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, 19. He says, he says, ah, 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 ah. and I pray for you to know the power of resurrection. Mm. So today God can perform the same miracles. Can use you and me to raise the people from the dead. To pray and the people will be healed. To understand. To receive prophecies and thinking in people. In the past, present, future of the people. Do you understand? Uh, who lives with me knows how, how I have so many experience uh, 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 in size, wonders, and miracles from God. Because this power is still available for us. Amen. Powerful. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Would you please pray for the people? Pray us out of here. Yeah, let's pray, guys. This was a nice time. And if you have more questions, okay? Uh, 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 you can write your question in your comments, okay? And you can do another video, answer questions for you. Let me pray for you now, okay? God, it's so natural. We have so many questions that we don't have answers. But thank you because you reveal your, your world clearly to us that you, you are God that's present. You are God that reveal yourself. And you reveal in the Bible your plan and the purpose for us. And you preserve this Bible for us. And today, through your word, we can find so many answers. We can be so impactful for your word, for your, your reality. In your word, your reality, your, your life. And you are so thankful for this, Father. So bless us. Keep blessing Caio and this ministry as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, my brother. Bye, guys. Love you guys.